Welcome back to databases. In this lecture we are going to look at database normalization. So we will be reasoning about good and bad design of databases and we will try to transform a database scheme into good design. We will begin with a brief overview. In this lecture we are going to look at functional dependencies. Functional dependencies are generalization of keys. In short, you could say that a functional dependency is a key for a subset of the columns of a relation. Functional dependencies play a major role in relational database design theory. And based on these functional dependencies, this theory defines when a relation is a normal form. A normal form is a good shape for a relation. So, when we have relations that violate the normal form, then usually this is a sign of a bad database design. Because it means that data is stored redundantly, or that information about different concepts is intermixed. So, for instance, consider this table courses. In this table, we store for each course the course number, the title of the course, the instructor, and the phone number of the instructor. The instructor and the phone number, they form a functional dependency, because the instructor uniquely determines the phone number. So you see in this table also that for the instructor Arthur, we have several times the instructor Arthur and several times we have the phone number of Arthur. So here we have an example of redundant storage of information. We have multiple times the information that the phone number of Arthur is 9002. So this is not a good database design. In this course, we will be looking at different normal forms. The main ones are the third normal form and the Boyce-Cott normal form. The third normal form is the quasi-standard used in practice. The Boyce-Cott normal form is a tiny bit more restrictive. It's easier to define. And what's important for us, it's good for the intuition of a good database design. Roughly speaking, you could say that the Boyce-Cott normal form requires that every functional dependency is a key. So what's the advantage of the third normal form? In very rare circumstances, it can happen that we cannot transform a relational schema into Boyce-Cott normal form while preserving all the functional dependencies. Some functional dependencies might get lost. For the third normal form, this transformation is always possible while preserving all functional dependencies. We will also see that there are normalization algorithms that can construct good relational schemas from a set of attributes and a set of functional dependencies. In practice, we will usually derive our relational models, our relational schemas, from conceptual models such as entity relationship diagrams. Then the normalization is used only as an additional check to see whether the derived design is good. When the entity relationship model is well designed, then the resulting relational tables will automatically be in Boyce-Cott normal form. However, it's important to be aware of these normal forms and the normalization algorithms in order to detect errors in the conceptual design and to understand how to fix these mistakes. All normal forms that we will be considering have as base assumption that the relations are at least in first normal form. The first normal form requires that all the table entries, so the values that are in the table cells, are atomic. 
So they are not lists, not sets, not records, not relations, and so on. In the relational model this is a given. The entries in the table cells are always atomic. All of the normal forms, the third normal form, the boy scott normal form, the fourth normal form, that we will be visiting later on, assume that the relations are in first normal form. And this is just to mention that the following are not violations of first normal form, but they are still a very bad design, so you should still not do these things. For instance, if you have a table value that contains a string, and this string contains a comma-separated list of values, then formally this is still a string, an atomic value, this is not a violation of first normal form, but storing a list in this form is still very bad design because it's hard to access the particular elements of this list. Also, you can think about storing a list of values by using multiple columns, one column for each entry in the list. So we have columns value 1, value 2, value 3. Also, this formally is not a violation of first normal form. In each of the cells, we still have an atomic value. But still, it's very bad design to store a list in this way. 